hope you enjoy this. Okay, what you are looking at is a time lapse of a painting that I was meaning to make for the longest time. It depicts my favorite fictional character of all times, Alucard from Castlevania, is the protagonist of a video game named Castlevania Symphony of the Night that came out from the PlayStation 1 and was for the longest time my favorite game ever before that Stranding came along, of course. Recently, Netflix uh, produced a cartoon show after Castlevania, not exactly after the game that I played back today when I was a kid, but more based on a previous game that came out from the NES, but Alcor appeared in there as a secondary character, and he appears on this series. Um, this series is dropping on May 13th. I'm not sure where I am going to blow this video. If it is before, well, it's going to drop in a couple of days. If it is after, then if you like animated series, it's really good. And well, this painting portrays him in a quite infamous scene from the last season. I was not precisely a huge fan of that scene. It's not exactly because of the change that we are presented at, which is quite a I'm not going to say what it is because this is probably a spoiler, but because of the treatment that they did, I think it was a lot of character for him to allow himself to be put in that vulnerable position. It's not exactly my my issue was not exactly on the big reveal, but on him being so easy of a victim. That's so not my car. <laughs> so um I don't know if you want to defend the show, I guess you could say, okay, this is not the same one of the night Alucar, this is the Alucar from previous versions from centuries before the same one of the night uh, happened. So maybe these events were triggering events to make the Alucar that you got to know later on the one of the night. So, okay, I might buy it like that. Still, I don't know. Just, just didn't land for some reason. Anyway, I made this painting of my favorite character of all times. And my favorite painting of all times too. This is a quite famous painting. I don't know if you're familiar with it. It's named The Fallen Angel, painted by Alexandre Cavanaugh. This was painted in 1847. And Alexander painted it when he was 24 years old. The original painting from the 18th century depicted Lucifer after he was kicked out from heaven by God. He was one of the most beautiful angels in God's earth and the story goes that he tried to defy God and tried to take his place and that's why he was kicked out from heaven for his arrogance and since then he has been rolling on hell and he is the temptation this beautiful beautiful creature that will tempt you with all the things you ever wanted in order to get you to sin this is how Catholicism tells the story but there are other names Versions that say that Lucifer was actually an ally of humans because humans were seen as less than perfect as some creatures that were not ready 
usually give humans the agency to take their own choices and this disagreement between them was what get was what got Lucifer kicked out from heaven. If you get curious and take a look at the rules of the Church of Satan, you will find that their commandments are actually not unreasonable. They are not painting pentagrams and sacrificing chickens or people or whatever. The commandments make a lot of sense if you think about it. I mean, it's do not give opinions or advice unless you're asked. Do not tell your troubles to others unless you're sure they want to hear them. When in another's home, show them respect or else do not go there. Do not take that which does not belong to you. Do not harm in children. Do not kill non-human animals unless you are attacked or for your food. When walking in open territory, bother no one. If someone bothers you, ask them to stop. If they do not stop, destroy them. Maybe this last one is the one that is fundamentally different from the commandments um, on regular Catholicism. Because, you know, they have the turn the other cheek and stuff. And here they will have none of it. It is not as bad as relation tends to be. Nowadays, I consider myself agnostic. I don't know if there is a god or not, but I certainly no longer believe on the Catholicism indoctrination that I grew up into when I was a child. I remember that I was very fearful of the consequences of uh, capital sin when I was a child because I didn't know better. I believe that I end up in hell if I didn't attend the church every Sunday. It actually caused me guilt and anxiety to think about it. Isn't it funny that you can develop fear against an idea of something that is not objectively true? And sometimes I wonder if we are not behaving like that with so many other elements in our daily lives. There is a word that we have in Spanish that I'm gonna say that it doesn't hold the same meaning in English. Uh, in Spanish it's maniqueo, in English it's maniquean, and it basically describes this mindset when things are either black or white, with no shades in between, and hardly anything in life is pure black and white. Hardly anything. Uh, but people still act that way. I mean, and it is so strange to me. Anyway, I recently, I recently popped into a video that was amazing. It was really well written. His name, why he doesn't want me by this girl. this girl, Julie Nog, and it is really amusing, it's basically her talking to her reflection, and her reflection tells her about the reasons why the guy she is dating does not want to be with her, and in this particular example they are talking about chicken wings, and the mirror goes on on explaining uh, how some people love buffalo wings, some people love dairy jacket wings, and if you are a dairy jacket, you are hardly going to be a buffalo wings person favorite flavor. They might accept you if there are no buffalo around. Option. They are never going to pick teriyaki or buffalo because their flavor is buffalo. It doesn't mean. 
apologize for the lack of structure and this entirely improvised video. I will resume with the tutorials and something that probably you can find more useful than just me rambling about whatever. So, well, thank you for listening to my rumblings and hope you have a fantastic day. Yes, um, there is that. Cállate loca.